Sometimes when observing a plant community, it's what you don't see that really tells the most about the system. And in this case, the most obvious thing I see missing from this forest are the young trees. Where are all the young trees? Well, this was actually a plantation, planted plantation style. These trees are all the same age. And for every bit of biomass we see above us in the canopy, there's that much biomass below. That means that there's incredible competition here for moisture. It's an area that doesn't have a lot of moisture to begin with. In fact, we have very hydrophobic soils. It doesn't take long when you're on the ground before you start finding cool stuff. This is the breast feather of a great horned owl. Very cool feather. But I was told once by a native person, you shouldn't have owl feathers, dark energy. <laughs> Off it goes. So what we're really here to do is look at the ground, this hydrophobic soil. If you were to look down in the soil here, see it's just dry as a bone. Nothing going on. You'll also find that there's a lot of surface roots. Those roots are competing with everything else. Not just the small trees, but all of the vegetation in the understory that would be growing underneath here. And that is where a lot of the action in these systems should be taking place. What we have here is a really simple forest structure. We just have the tree, canopy, and essentially a totally two-dimensional flat understory. That doesn't leave as many opportunities as another more diverse native plant community. Now what we do have in here are a lot of conifers. We have primarily Monterey cypress. We also have Monterey pine. These are the secondary ones in the area. These ones, they've got the three different needles coming out of the same base. That's one way you know it's Monterey. And they have, of course, pine nuts. These pine nuts, much like acorns, are a resource that's abundant for part of the year, especially on hot days. You can hear these pine cones cracking and the nut hatches are out in force along with chickadees and a few other birds that are able to take those seeds and remember 10 to 20,000 different caching spots, different hiding spots that they come back to over the course of the winter and gather those seeds. Now the other reason that pine is especially important in one of these coniferous woodland areas are that they have a soft wood. That soft wood is needed by the primary cavity nesters, things like nuthatches and woodpeckers. They create holes in the, tr in the soft wood that then are safe places to raise their young. Young that are raised inside a nest are safe until they come out, unlike a cup nesting songbird, which is really vulnerable. So in that way, woodpeckers and nuthatches are keystone species, true keystone species, meaning they create a niche for a whole nother group of birds. So those are things like Pacific wrens and chestnut-backed chickadees and titmice and ash-throated flycatchers, wood ducks, western screech owls, American kestrels, on and on. There's a lot of birds that are these secondary cavity obligates. They need the woodpeckers out there making the holes for them. So this system, albeit a simple system, it's good to know where the resources are. One way to increase the productivity of cavity nesting songbirds in your area is with, wood, with nesting boxes. And that's something that we're gonna show how to do.